Hey guys, welcome back. In the 13th lesson of the Official Bolt series, we're going to set up our main menu scene so that we can actually get into a level, we can see the levels that we have unlocked, we can quit the application, and so on. So first of all, let's look at the main menu scene. I'll open this up here. I have the level select menu has one, two, three, four. It's going to refer to the first, second, third, and fourth level. If the levels are unlocked, you're going to be able to click on these buttons and go to that level. If you have not yet completed that level, then you will have to complete the previous level in order to get to it. You can click new game to reset the levels completed back to just the first one. And you're going to be able to click quit to end the application, to quit the application. So let's get started setting this up. First of all, what I want to do is get my one, two, three, four to actually load the appropriate scene. Because if we're on the main menu, the main menu is the first menu you're going to see. You want them to be able to get into the game pretty easily. So if we do this from the main menu here and I go up to canvas, I have the panel here that has the buttons objects, level one, level two, level three, and level four. Now these are all prefabs of the same object. So what I can do, if I go into my prefabs folder here, I have menu level button. So all these buttons are going to have a flow graph that will allow us to decide what happens whenever we click on the button. So on the prefab, what I wanna do is add a flow machine and this is going to be a macro because we have to make sure it can be applied to all of these prefab objects. One, two, three, and four. It's going to be a macro. Create a new macro. We're going to call it menu level button. And now with that added to our buttons, what I want to do is I want to add an object variable to the prefab that is going to define what level to load whenever that button is clicked on. So each button should load a different level, right? But we're all based on the same prefab. So by doing it with this variable, all I have to do is come on each of these buttons and change the value of the variable. So back on my prefab, on objects, it's gonna be an object variable. I wanna create one called scene. And it's gonna to refer to the scene that it should load. The type for this is going to be a string. It's gonna be the scene name. And now on my level one button, I have an object with a string variable called scene, and I want to call this, I want to set the value of this to be level one. And then for level two button, level two, and then so on. And now what I want to do is in this macro that we just created, in this flow graph, I want to set it up so that when I click on the button, it will check the value of the scene object variable and it will load the level based on the value. So if we go back into our scenes folder, I see level one, level two, level three, level four. So that's referring to the name of the scene. And if I go to file and go to build settings, I can see they are added as one, two, three, and four. Make sure they are in your build settings or you will not be able to load them with this method. So for this, I don't need either of these events. What I need is I need the on button click event. Drag the flow out because I want to load a scene based on a scene name whenever the button is clicked. And we're going to check the scene name from the variable that's on each button. So I'm going to say load scene. And I want the one with the scene name parameter. And the scene name that I want to load is going to be the object variable that we created called scene, right? So I want to say add unit get object variable. And it is going to be an object variable called scene. And I want to pass this value into the scene name port just like that. So now whenever I click on the button, it's going to load the scene based on the scene name that we have added as the scene variable. So now if we were to try this out, let's see what happens. And now if I click on, let's say scene three, we load the third scene, level three dot unity. Pretty cool. But we want to make sure that you can't click on two, three, or four unless you have completed one, you know, then two, then three, and then you unlock the fourth level. It's going to be an unlock. So to do that, we have to use our saved variables that will tell us which levels that we have completed. So if I go over to saved here, I can see that I have level two unlocked and level three unlocked. And we want to use this so that we can actually unlock the button so they can be clicked on. By default, we will have them be disabled. So if I come over here to button, I can say it is disabled. And that means you can no longer click on it, not interactable. But I always want to make sure that the first level, no matter what, is interactable. So if you haven't done any levels before, you want to be able to load the first level still. So I will say the same way we have this written out here, I'll take, we'll just take uh, level two unlocked, copy that, 
and I'll paste it in here and I will actually make it level one unlocked and it's gonna be a boolean so bool just like that and then value is true level one unlocked is true so now whenever the game is loaded even if we've never played the game before level one will be set to unlocked and we want to use this data to actually decide which buttons you can click on so back to our button prefab here and what I want to do is I want to concatenate the scene variable with the underscore unlocked like we did before whenever we we're actually saving that value so what I can do is drag this out just click and drag it's going to allow me to get the variable called scene on this object the object variable and I want to concat these two together so concat again zero and one argument concat two things together this being the first the second being just a string string literal and it was just underscore unlocked so now the value of this outputs will be seen or seen uh, whatever the value is for that level button so level one underscore unlocked level two underscore unlocked and we want to check to see if we have a variable by that name and if we do have a variable by that name is it checked as true or is it checked as false because if it is checked as true that means we have done that level so that one should be unlocked if it is checked as false we have not done that level so it should be locked so I'm going to right click and I'm going to say is saved variable defined so does this saved variable exist and the one I'm looking for is the value we created with these two values here and I also want to get the value of that variable so I'm going to say again saved and I want to say get saved variable and again the exact same value that we concatenated here we want to get the value of that variable now the way we're going to use these two is all we've done so far is defined which variable we're looking for for if it does exist and then we're going to get the value of it but what I want to do is I want to check these to make sure that it does exist and that we did also get the value successfully and to do that I want to use an and unit it's going to allow me to say this and that I want to make sure that I have this that is true and make sure I have that that is true but what do we want to do if both things are true well that means we have the value and it is set to true right so if the value is set to true that means we have unlocked it so what I want to do is set the buttons interactable field to be true so typing in interactable I want to go down to set interactable it's going to allow me to set the fill to true or false for interactable I'm going to drag the value that we just created here directly into set interactable so if it was true then we are going to enable the interaction for that button and I want to check for this just we'll just do it every frame and the reason that is is because we're going to also have the new game button which is going to change the state of the saved variables and whenever that happens I want to make sure that this updates to show you okay these are no longer unlocked you can't interact with these buttons and the quickest way to do that for us is just to check it every single frame it's just the main menu you don't have a lot to worry about when it comes to performance for this so now let's save this and try it out so what happened is we have one two and three that are interactable four is not interactable now see why that is saved I have level one unlocked level two unlocked and level three unlocked we have the initial level one unlock set so that it's automatically unlocked level two and level three were already set to unlocked now if I were to change the values here you can see since we do it every single frame it updates our menu for us pretty cool and now what I want to do is I want to set it up so when I click on new game it resets all of them and only make sure that one is unlocked so let's do that real quick so for this we'll do it on the new game button and since this is only used one time and only for this we're going to have it be an embedded graph so flow machine and we're going to set it to embed just like that and get rid of all this for now all we care about for now is whenever the button was clicked on whenever a new game button is clicked on I want to first of all make sure that one is set to true so you can click on true and I want to loop through all the remainder for our saved variables and set them to false all we have to do so first of all we're going to do on button click and whenever I click on the button what I want to do is I want to set the saved variable so set saved variable 
pass the flow in and I want to set it for level one unlocked. So no matter what, again, level one unlocked should be true. We can always load level one. So it's going to be a Boolean literal. Check that as true. There we go. So that's the first step. Now what I want to do is once we do this, pass the flow out and I want to go through all of the other ones and make sure they are set to false. And this is going to be pretty interesting. So I want to go ahead and make this full screen shift space. I want to pass the flow out here and we're going to use a for loop. So for this, the first value is the first where we're going to start the index at. So zero, one, two, it's, if we're counting up, we're going to start at zero, right? zero, one, two, three, four. But if we're counting up starting from one, it would be one, two, three, four, five. So for this, I know I don't want to look at the first button, right? Because we already have it set as true. We don't want to set it as false. So I want to start at the second button. And the last one I want to go to is we're going to go up to five. So it's going to be two, three, four, five. That's four total, two, three, four, five. And we're going to step up by one each time. And exit is where the flow goes once the for loop is completed. Body is where the flow goes every single loop that we do. So we do two, then we do three, then we do four, then we do five. So every single time it's going to pass the flow out of the loop and we can go somewhere with it. And index is the one we're currently on. So we're on the second one, then the third one, then the fourth, and then the fifth one. It's just the index value, the number. So first of all, I know I'm going to be setting a saved, va uh, saved variable for each of these, right? So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. And for each of these, so it's going to come out of the body, every single loop that we do. And then the, the more complex part is deciding which variable that we're actually setting for this. So we have to get the variable name. We know that it's going to be level one underscore unlocked, level two underscore unlocked. So what I can do, since we're starting at two, we're ignoring one, I could just say level and then take the index and concatenate that onto that and then underscore unlocked. So to do that, we're going to use another concat here. Done this a few times now, but this time I want to concat three different values. So the first value being level, the second value being the level number, and the third value being underscore unlocked. So I'm going to check on that. So again, the first value just being a string literal that is going to be called level. The second value being the level that we're currently looped on top of. So we're starting at two, so it'll be two, then it'll be three, then it'll be four, then it'll be five. We'll go through each one of those. All I have to do to do that is pass the indexed output into the arg1 input port, which is going to put it right in the middle, right? So level one underscore unlocked, level two underscore unlocked, and so on. And then the last value to concat onto that is going to be another string literal, and it's going to be just underscore unlocked. There we go. And then pass this value in as the variable name. So this is the variable name. The value will be setting it as is false. So drag this out, do a Boolean, and it's going to be false. There we go. So now we should be able to click on the new game button. It will loop through each one other than the first one, and it will set it to false by going to level, then the level number, underscore unlocked and setting the set variable or setting the saved variable to false. Let's try this out. So one, two, and three are unlocked. I click on new game. One is unlocked, two, three, and four not unlocked. Click on level one and I go to level one. Pretty cool. So that's all there is to that. Now we have a progress system where we can actually make progress in the game. Whenever we do that, it'll save that out to a saved variable. And then when we click the game and come back in, we can say, okay, yeah, I was on level three. I want to hop back into level three, that kind of thing. Pretty cool. And the last thing we have to do is make quit, quit the application. And we've done this before from the pause menu. So let's do that really quick. Quit button. I'm going to add another flow machine. It's going to be an embed because it's only for this one. I'm going to get rid of all this here. And we're going to say on button click. And when you do that, quit application. And you can see how fast you can do this kind of stuff once you know what you want to do. So let's play the game a bit and see what happens. So we'll go to level one. Going to hop through here, beat that level. Nice. Going to grab this key, beat that level. Nice. And then I'm like, oh, I'm done. I want to quit for the day. So I'm going to go back to menu. And now in menu, I have one, two, and three. 
And if I quit and come back later, I can say, oh, okay, I'm going to get back into my level three. Oh, and here I am, level three with my first enemy. Oh, and I died. That's fine. There we go. Pretty cool. Then go to new game and it resets everything. And that's all we need to do for pretty much the entire course. And now you should have a pretty cool game written entirely in Bolt. Not a single line of code did you have to write. Something cool you can do now is take this and build more levels, build some puzzles with the, the key system that you have set up, uh, make out different projectile weapons that do different things, different types of enemies, all kinds of cool things, different obstacles and traps, bigger and better levels, a more robust menu system, all kinds of cool things you can do from here to learn even more. And if you ever get stuck, be sure to check the links in the description below to learn how you can get some support. You can find the manual to learn all the things Bolt can do, all kinds of cool things like that in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed this course. Hope you learned how to use Bolt and really how powerful it can be for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with programming or, or maybe you have some designers on your team and you want to create your own custom nodes. And this is a really good starting point for that. So you can understand how Bolt really works. Maybe you fall into one of those categories. If so, I hope you learned a lot. My name is Austin and I will see you next time.